college campuses are a converging point for people of all religious backgrounds, but religious and cultural differences rarely become a topic of conversation there. The University of Illinois at Chicago has one of the most diverse student populations in the country. So religious leaders from Agape Christian Ministries and Metro Chicago Hillel partnered with the school to develop the Interfaith Social Justice Dialogue Program. Let's welcome our guests from the University of Illinois at Chicago who participated in the dialogue. Rabia Halim is an accounting graduate student and a Muslim. Alana Seidman is a linguistics major who is Jewish. And Hugh Vondracek is a Christian studying international relations. Hugh, tell us about this Interfaith Social Justice Dialogue Program. So the Interfaith Social Justice Dialogue Program is a, is a program for UIC students to come together and really intentionally talk about uh, the, the differences in culture and theology that exist and how our, our different backgrounds and our different uh, specifically religious backgrounds influence our thinkings about uh, issues that matter to us. Okay, excellent. And Alana, how did you get involved with the program? So um, about two years ago, I did a program in Israel which was very similar to the Peace Corps. Okay. Um, but it was only five months and I felt like that wasn't long enough to save the world or change it or... Oh, um, come on, five months? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, but I felt compelled for the last few years to continue that kind of social justice and I ran into a flyer for an interfaith dialogue at Hillel and I thought, I have to do it. I just, I have to do it. It's the next step in my journey to changing the world, however I can do that. So Good for you. We yeah. could use some changes around here. Yes, we could. <laughs> and how about you, Rabia? So I actually, one day before class, my phone died. So I was forced to go across campus and actually look at people and look at things <laughs> instead of staring at my phone. Imagine that, and no like, phones. <laughs> and like Alana, I also saw a flyer and I actually got late to class because I had to like mentally memorize the email address and the phone number because I couldn't take a picture. Um, but it was definitely worth it. It's like in the old days. <laughs> yeah, I know. I guess that's how people did it back then. <laughs> feel it. Nice. I'm glad that you did. Alana, you're talking about saving the world. What do you actually hope this group is going to achieve? <clears throat> well, it's taught me a lot about how to um, struggle with my own values um, by being pushed to think about why I believe the things that I believe and by being around a group of people that also want to change the world and make things better. Um, I hope to learn how to seek out these kinds of groups um, more often. And Hugh, what do you think the most important takeaway has been for you so far? I think uh, building on what Alana says, sort of talking about our differences, um, I think the big takeaway for me is that uh, even though we're coming from different religious perspectives, we have the same, the same goals and that they're, uh, they're university and universal values shared in the group. Excellent. And are you thinking you might use this background in your career? Yeah, so I'm looking at uh, going into a career in the State Department where uh, communicating and building relationships with people who are different from me, who have different backgrounds and stories is a really key part of what I would be doing. So. Absolutely. And Alana, how about you? I have no idea what I want to be when I grow up. Um, I'm getting a Master of the Arts in teaching English as a second language. Um, so I'm around people of all different backgrounds all the time. I feel like this is just sort of the organic way for me to exist is with people of other backgrounds. And something with that um, I'd love to continue doing, but we don't know what, so I'm not grown up yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully you never will be. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I hope I will be, but. <laughs> Rabia, what do you think? How do you think this will affect your future? As an accounting major, sometimes I think that maybe some of these things aren't applicable in my life. You know, I'll go out, meet with clients, probably not have a conversation about religion. I think that would actually get me in trouble. Right. <laughs> but I think having an understanding of where people come from and what they believe is very important in any field, regardless of what you're studying and what you're doing, um, especially being able to, to relate with people on a basis more than just knowing them, knowing what they stand for, knowing what their values are, I think is important, regardless of what profession you go into. Excellent. Are there things that have surprised you, things you've learned about the other faiths that, that you really didn't have any information about? And I think for me, it's been less about what I learned about another faith and more about uh, finding out things that I thought would be shared amongst all of us that are really kind of assumed theologies for myself okay. and having to really be 
critical in thinking about why do I believe this, and uh, and it's not necessarily a universal okay. belief, and so it, it's hard, but it's a good growing experience as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and increasing self awareness. Yeah, ladies, anything that's surprised you or stuck out to you? I always found it very challenging. Um, we would always bring the conversation back to how our faiths um, sort of motivate us to say what we just said. And then I'd have to rewind and say, well, gee, I don't know how this relates to my faith. Like, what, what is it? Um, but people kept bringing up social justice and what this means. Um, and what surprised me the most was that whenever anyone did actually talk about a specific value, so like tikkun olam or charity or the five pillars of Islam, like these all have to do with helping other people. And I think that faith um, in something bigger makes our humanity greater. And I think that that was ubiquitous in the group. And that really gave me hope. So, Excellent. Have there been things you've been able to share about your own faith that others didn't know? Um, for me specifically, I remember one time someone came to me and asked, um, in terms of Islam, we're required to pray five times a day. So someone asked me how many Muslims pray five times a day. And I had to take a step back and go, okay, well, there's, there, oh, there's over a billion Muslims in the world. They live throughout the world. Um, I've gone to maybe three or four countries that are majority Muslim, but even then I didn't feel like I met everyone in the country as hard as I tried to. So I really couldn't give an answer. And I realized that we live in such a big world that it's hard to make generalizations. And I think that's true of all faiths, of all ideologies. So really taking a step back and being able to tell someone, I don't know, this is what I think, but at the end of the day, it's kind of up in the air as far as what people believe. And that's why it's very helpful to get to know people in a one-on-one -on -one basis, because then you kind of get an idea of what the world's like. Mm -hmm for each individual. Mm -hmm. If you were going to give advice to someone, either at UIC or at another campus or wherever, about interfaith dialogue, what pointers would you want to give them? I would say you just have to go in and do it. Um, like Alana, I also traveled to Israel about two years ago on a student program. And as a Muslim, as someone with an Arabic name, I was actually scared to go. And I wasn't sure if this is something I wanted to do. But I realized if I don't go out there, if I don't try, I'll never meet these people. I'll never understand what this country is like, a country that's you know, very conflicted and a lot of people don't know what it's like, they just hear about it on the news. So like that, you have to live your life and, and do new experiences. You know, if you don't go out there, if you don't see what other people are like, you'll never learn, you'll never grow. And especially on a college campus, that's kind of the point of going to college. So I think that's the main takeaway for college students especially. How easy is it for you to pray five times a day on the UIC campus? Do you find it? At UIC, um, it's slightly difficult um, just commuting. That's probably the biggest issue is I have to kind of calculate in my head, this is how long it's going to take me to get to campus. This is how much time I have before class. Um, sometimes I've even gone late to class and I've explained it to professors who thankfully have been very appreciative and understanding. Okay. Um, so it is slightly difficult, but um, I think in all faiths, whenever you're trying to do something that's difficult, there's more reward in that. You know, you're trying harder, and I think that's slightly what religion wants you to do. It wants, to, wants you to prioritize faith over your daily life. So that's something I try to remember. Excellent. For you too, is there, have you had any difficulty practicing or expressing your own faith on campus? I guess Jewish holidays also are usually a challenge. Um, we always have this inner debate, like, do I miss my exam um, and make it up, or do I play with the rest of the kids? Um, <laughs> it's not, you know, so terrible, but it is always, you have to consider what you value. Um, and just like Robbie, I sometimes find myself saying, well, to put my faith over my, um, my education, and this is, this is also a form of education. Thank you so much to Rabia. Alana, and to Hugh for being here today. I'm Polly Toner for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.